Hey guys, what's happening? So, happy Friday. Um, so yesterday I got a thing in the mail. All Express finally got here. Um, yeah, so I got these 50 ohm, 250 watt resistors. So, I wanted to make a, like a dummy load. And uh, I guess I'm restoring some radios here. I'm recapping them. But I want to tune and line them, but I want to have a good dummy load. Uh, so if you're not familiar, like a dummy load is just like a, like a perfect antenna, perfect SWR antenna. Um, plus when you're testing, you don't really want to be transmitting anyways. Um, yes, yeah, so I can, I mean, this was super, super cheap. I mean, these were, and they were like $10 on Amazon and they were like $2 on AliExpress. I mean, I had to wait probably like two weeks to get them in, get them in here, but, um, so a couple different ways you can do this, um. Like I have five five of these resistors here, so I'm gonna make one 250 watt dummy load, 50 ohm 250 watt. But then I'm also gonna make a thousand watt. Not right now, but I'm gonna come back and do a thousand water. Um, but right now, because I don't have a reference of how hot these things get, like I literally have no idea how hot these get. So, I mean, the only reference I've I've seen a couple of videos, but they have these gigantic heat sinks for these little resistors. So. Last night I was going through my old electronics box and I was just trying to find heat sinks because like I said, I don't have a reference. So this is actually an old CPU cooler off of like an Intel Atom motherboard. And actually, I do keep all my old like uh, CPU heat sinks and stuff. So you can just use a, like a CPU heat sink, you know, like I have all these heat sinks here. So I might, depending on how hot this, cause this is a pretty heavy heat sink, but I might make an active cooler for that thousand water. That's a pretty thick, heavy piece of uh, copper, but with a fan. Like I said, I have no reference of how hot, I mean, I'll know when I'm gonna build this 250 water, so I know how hot this thing will get, but yeah, some of the ones I've seen, even just like the a thousand watts are gigantic pieces of metal. So, I don't know, I guess we'll see. So, I'm gonna use this one, I'm gonna try for this one, I'm gonna clean off that paste right there. Like I said, this is an old CPU heat sink. And then last night I, I designed this, uh, case to go around it. It just pops like that. Four screws. Like that. And put some lettering on it. 250 watt, 50 ohm. And I'll just store it like that. Alright, so I drilled the holes M3. Put a little thermal paste on here. Put this in place. And then I can actually have I don't spit I mean I could actually if I wanted to I could make this a probably a thousand watt, but like I said I need to know how much heat this thing generates. Put some M3 screws in there like that. Alright, so I just want to confirm that it actually works. Alright, 50 ohm. Alright, got it wired in. Hope you can see them camera. So the positive goes to the center lead. I mean, the red goes to the center lead. Negative goes to the case ground. Um, so everything on the heat sink should be grounded. All right, so let's do, I'm doing our ohm check here and make sure I'm still getting 50 ohms. All right, still getting 50 ohms. 50.3. All right, so I have my present grant I'm restoring. I'm just gonna send it four watts or whatever. Do some, I can make sure it's on AM. Um, see what kind of heat this thing generates. I mean, this thing supposedly can, can handle 50 watts, so. I mean, maybe I can turn this into a thousand water, I'm not sure. I can easily get more heat sinks on there. I mean, more uh, resistors on there, so. This thing's not even getting hot. Definitely trees, man. Got the connector. I got the antenna wire connected right into it. I mean, obviously, I, mean, I could hook this up to my, my linear amp, but uh, that's I think the linear amp puts out around 2-something, um, which is kind of like at the very top. I don't use, you don't usually want to stretch it. I don't get that far. You don't usually want to go to the max capacity of any device, capacitor, resistor, everything, you know? Um, like, I don't want to send this thing at 250 watts. Yeah, I've seen it go up to 225, 250, so... Um, yeah, I don't want to send anything max wattage on a device that's rated at 250 watts. I 
I guess I have my Nano VNA I can run on it, but I don't know if that's even necessary now. I'm actually still learning that device. I just got it yesterday or the day before, and then so I gotta figure out how this to operate it, you know? So, alright, so I just had to hook up my old Royce uh, SWR meter here. And we'll do an uh, adjustment. Let's see what this thing does. Is that right? Shouldn't it be more like around way lower than that? Alright, so I decided to hook up my NLVNA. I'm getting 189 on this thing. I should be getting 1 to 1. Are the cables bad? Alright, so last night I decided to do some tests on this thing. And it's actually fine for like lower HF. So like right now I'm getting a SWR of 1.891 on 11 meter, which I'm really just messing with this CB. So do a recall. If I go down to 80 meters, the SWR drops to 1.144. But there's something up with the resistance and the capacitance of this thing. I mean the inductions. There's something wrong. I think, I think my wires are too long. The, the feeder wire is going to the resistor. So, let me do this. Where's that Smith chart here? Smith. All right. So here it looks, so this is, this. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm actually pretty new to Smith charts myself. So I know this right here, the center point should be right there in this crosshairs right there. So like right there in the center, that's where it's supposed to be. Um, you can see the resistance is different here. Let's go back to another trace here. Third trace, back, format, resistance. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm still new to this device. I've only been playing with it for a couple of days. So, um, yeah, I'm actually pretty, I mean, I, I know I should be here. So, like, when I go to, like, CB radio, it's even way further out. So, it seems like right now I can do, like, 20, 40, and 80 meters. I mean, I'm getting a, a SWR 1.5 or lower. Um, but ideally, I'm trying to get in this 50 ohm ring. I want to get, I need to get down to here. So, I'm thinking these long lead wires are, are causing the issue. So I just redesigned the box, um, which will give me actual top access. You know, it's, it's a little bit shorter. They don't need that big. And so I can actually solder the wires before I put them in place. So I can go, I'm, I'm actually going to try to have the lead basically right on top of it. So I think these lead wires are actually creating like this inductance and capacitance. You know what I mean? Because it changes. Like I said, I had to learn last night about the Smith chart. You know what I mean? How that whole thing works. So, um, yeah, I think I need I need to basically have this thing right on top of this thing so I don't have a lot of unshielded wire coming out, you know? Um, and have a short ground wire almost right to the chassis here, you know, right to this aluminum. So that's why I redesigned the box where I can actually have it in there and then almost like solder the wires in place before I, uh, I do that, you know? So... So that's a new design right there. Put that in the light, maybe you can see it. Soldering's not great. It's hard to get in there, but um, so I'm getting 50 ohms. I did a test. Uh, we'll see if that makes any difference. Yeah, like I said, I watched a couple of videos, kind of like some obscure videos, which are kind of cool. But the guy actually was showing on a Smith chart, like if you shorten the wires, you know how it made a huge difference in the resistance. So. Um, yeah, he actually went down to even like going to like a service mount capacitor. What's like an IMSL? Something like that. Some one of those electronics channels. All right, so let me uh, hook this back up and we'll see what happens. All right, take a look. So the resistance went down. I think it was like 551. And the SWR went down. Let's go to recall. Let's go to 27 meters right here. Oh yeah, that, that, that SWR before was one like 1.9 for uh, CB band, 27 megahertz. Okay, this is usable now. Just by shorting those wires, man. Crazy. All right, let's do, uh, go back to the Smith chart. Okay, trace, trace one. Um, we'll do, uh, actually, trace. 
go back. We'll do the Smith chart. And go back. Trace. Trace three. Back. Uh, resistance. Yeah, resistance definitely goes up. I, that's why I noticed that when the resistance goes up, the SWR goes up. So I haven't learned about reflux yet. I think it's. I'm still learning this device. I mean, I, I just got this a day or so ago. Um, all right, so it went from 1.9 to 1.4 in my CB range, and that's the range I'm going to be testing in, so now it's actually usable. All right, so that's the end of this video. Um, man, I never thought I would have to go down a, a, a dummy load rabbit hole. But, um, yeah, interesting. You know, it's good. I'm learning. I mean, every time I have to go down one of these dummy holes, I learn a lot of stuff, so... All right, so antenna science is a ah, that's a tricky subject, man. It's, there's no absolutes. It just it's kind of frustrating, but um, I'm learning though. It's cool. Um, all right, so let me know if you guys would do something different here because I kind of like to know. Um, so yeah, man, I got five hundred dollars, five dollars into it. So you know, and I had to design the box, re print it, do some testing. I probably have like four hours into it, you know. Plus, I had to spend a lot of time learning my meter and about dumb dummy loads. It was cool. It was fun. All right, guy. Oh yeah, it uh, only works good for uh, HF. I don't. It didn't work good for uh, you know VHF um, higher bands. So, all right, cool. Yeah.